If you're applying for a maths degree, this is the video for you because today we're going to be talking about things you need to know if you're applying for a maths degree. Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. I do hope you're all well. Let me know how you're doing in the comments down below. It's that time of year where you start thinking about university applications. I think deadline has already passed for the medical applications. I think that's October, but the applications for other courses close in January. So we've not got long left. Now, like I said, we're going to be talking about things you need to know if you're applying for a maths degree in this video. I've got things that you need to think about, then I've got some things that you can actively do to prepare and get ready and to sort of take into consideration when you're applying. And also, at the end of the video, I'm going to take you through some notation that you need to know in your maths degree. For anybody that doesn't know, my name is Harry Surplus, I'm 18 years old, and I started my maths degree in September. I'm doing a pure maths degree at the University of Manchester and because of coronavirus it has all been online but I have still enjoyed it. I'm in my first year and we're just about to finish semester one so I feel like I can give you a kind of true representation of what it's like to start a maths degree even though I haven't actually been in uni yet, I've done it all online. Still doesn't matter because I've still learned quite a bit of maths and got used to starting my maths degree and it's all been quite recent so I feel like I can give you some advice. The first thing you need to think about is why have you applied for that maths degree? If you've not applied yet then you want to think why do you want to apply? And starting off like this is quite good. Even if you've already applied just take a little time out to think what are the reasons to why I've applied to do a maths degree? Do you think that you're good at maths or are you good at maths? You don't always have to have been good at maths. You don't have to be naturally good at maths. I don't even think that's a thing. But, you know, you don't have to be the perfect maths person to do a maths degree. Like myself, I struggle with maths sometimes. It doesn't go into my brain really, really quickly. I have to do a lot of extra work. But I'm doing a maths degree because I love it. Also, if you've not applied yet, think about is it you that wants to do that degree or is it somebody else that's kind of influencing you? People, of course, can influence you, but make sure you make that last decision. And if you've already applied, make sure you kind of know what you're getting yourself in for, you're uh, ready to start that degree and you're interested in maths because all of those things I've mentioned will really help you. It might be useful for you to look up the things that you're going to study. I would definitely recommend this because that way you kind of get an insight into what you're going to be getting yourself in for. Is there maths that you're really interested in? Is there maths that you don't really like? Have a look at how the course is distributed. What maths do you do in the course? How are you examined? What maths do you learn? How many modules do you have? Loads of things like that are really interesting to find out before you start your maths degree. To find that information, you'll probably go to your university website and they'll have a different website for each course. So have a look on the math website and see what maths topics are on there. So planning ahead and having a look at the website is really, really useful. Another thing to think about is, are you dedicated to the workload? Maths degrees are really hard. I've only done my first semester and I feel like I can already say that. There is a lot of work for maths degrees. And the thing is with maths, you have to practice maths to get better at it. So you've constantly got to be doing maths. Make sure that you do have that dedication to do a maths degree because you don't want to be falling behind. Yes, sometimes you might not do a problem sheet and you probably will get a problem sheet every week. But what you need to think about is if I miss a problem sheet or if I don't do all the questions on it, am I going to do that in another week? Am I going to catch up? Hopefully you will do because in maths degrees you probably will fall behind. I've fallen behind a couple of weeks and I pick myself back up. Like I said, you will probably get a problem sheet each week. So make sure you're on top of that and you're aware of that and you know when your deadlines are because then you will get everything done on the deadline and hopefully your maths will go smoothly. Now what I wanna talk about is things that you can actually do. My big top tip is to brush up on integration and differentiation. This will be so useful and you will thank yourself. Quite a lot of A-level integration and differentiation will come up and the thing is at A level that integration or that differentiation is a single question. You might get a question that says integrate this and you have to use a certain method. Whereas what I've noticed is the degree is very calculus based but 
it's not about integrating this specific thing. What you have to do is integrate that within a big question. So they're not really testing that you can integrate because they're presuming you already know that from A-level or whatever course you've done before your degree. So make sure you brush up on those techniques. Methods like the product rule, the quotient rule, integration by substitution, etc. All those kind of methods, like I said, are in the questions. They're not assessing your ability to do that on its own. They want you to do that in a question. And sometimes in lectures, they kind of skip over those. They say you would do this by... Uh, substitution and then they do it by substitution and just give you the answer or they might say you know you integrate this using the product rule and then they just give you the answer and they don't go through the method because they expect you to know the method so I would definitely advise that you go through differentiation and integration and make sure you know your methods you know that sine differentiates to cause and then that differentiates to minus sign and minus sine differentiates to minus cause and you can keep going with that make sure you know things like that that will just help you and make you smooth the answering questions. Also, integration and differentiation pops up everywhere. It's not just in the calculus course, it comes up in probability. It will probably come up in uh, foundations of pure maths, I think it has done for me. So you want to make sure that you're good at it because it comes up everywhere in a maths degree. My second tip kind of links to number one, but this time what I want you to do is I want you to have a look at coding. You probably haven't done much coding before. The majority of people haven't. There might be a few people that have or they did computer science or something, but I didn't. I never did coding before and it was completely new to me when I started my degree. So you might be in the same situation and it can be quite daunting trying to learn something completely new. You know, you think you're going into a maths degree and people say first year is quite easy, which I tell you, I really don't think it is. It's not easier than A-level. I think it's maybe a little bit harder, maybe the same level, but we're going on a tangent here. Tangent, keyword, anyway. Um, yeah, you wanna get good at coding or not perfect at it, you just wanna know a little bit about it. So if you're like me and you never did any coding before, before, then introduce yourself to some code. Have a look at MATLAB. MATLAB is probably what you will start coding with. It's what I've started coding. Don't learn the whole of the language of MATLAB because, you know, even I don't know that yet. Probably third years don't know that. What you want to do is just familiarise yourself with maybe the interface of the software or download the software, have a play about, have a look at some summary videos on YouTube or some introductory lectures on YouTube. Just things that you can do to familiarise yourself with, for example, MATLAB. But like I said, you don't have to learn the language, you don't need to know the code, just have a look at what you're going to be learning in the degree. You might also want to have a look at things that you struggle with from A-level. I actually got given sheets when I started my degree. They weren't sheets actually, they were online. We had some online quizzes that we needed to do that basically summarised everything that our university expected us to already know. Some bits that I struggled with, I went back to the start, I looked at my A-level textbooks and went through them. So that's some advice that I'd give to you if you're starting your degree. Now I'm going to be talking about notation. It's really important to know notation because you won't understand maths questions if you don't know the notation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce you to a little bit of notation now so that you can come back to this video later if you want to summarise when you're about to start your degree or you're just interested now or, you know, you just want to know some maths notation. There is notation at A-level that you use, things like therefore, which is three dots. You probably have seen that A-level before. It's not really used at degree level. Sometimes I use it, but my lecturers, I've never really seen them use it, to be honest. It can be used. I don't think, you know, you're not supposed to use it, but that's probably one of them that you see at A-level that you don't really see at degree level. Some notation that you probably haven't seen before is implies. Implies is an arrow and what this does is connects two statements together. For example, if we assume that P is true and from that we can prove that Q is true, then we can say that P implies Q. And P and Q are just statements. Second notation is kind of an adaptation of the imply sign. It's an imply sign that works both ways and this is called if and only if. It's again used to connect two statements, but this time we kind of have two statements that can connect together to imply one statement. So what I mean is if we had A implies B, and then we also had B implies A, we can put those together to say A 
if and only if B, because they imply each other both ways. The sets of numbers will come up a lot and you will need to know them, so here they are. Z is the set of all integers, R is the set of all real numbers, Q is the set of all rational numbers, N is the set of all natural numbers, and C is the set of all complex numbers. Five of them, have I missed any of them out? I don't think I have. A curly E means element of. So for example, we could say six is an element of Z because we know six is an integer, so six is an element of Z. We could also say that N is an element of C if N was nine minus seven I because C is a complex number and N if N is nine minus seven I is a complex number. An upside down A means for all. So what I could say is for all N in Z and I would write that upside down A N element Z and that reads for all N in Z. A backwards E means there exists. So we could say there exists P in R which means there exists a P, which is a real number. You will do a lot of proofs in your maths degree. The degree is very heavily proved based, as you may expect or you might not expect. At the end of every proof, you'll probably see a square. And what that means is end of proof. I finish my proof and everything in that proof proves the statement. I don't really know how to explain the next one. It's a cross, but it kind of has two lines and that means contradiction. If, for example, you're doing a proof by contradiction and you end up with a contradiction, at the end of that contradiction, you can do this kind of double cross and it means, like I've said, contradiction. You may also see some alternatives to this symbol. Some may do, I think, curls next to them or dots in between the lines, but any kind of abbreviation or alternative alternative of that symbol means contradiction. There are also lots of notations for differentiation. We know if we've got a function f of x, then the derivative is f dash of x. If we've got y, then we can write the derivative as dy dx. We know that if we've got y, we could also write it y dot or y dash. So make sure you get used to those notations because you might use quite a few of those when you start your degree. That is all I've got for today's video. If you have not yet applied for your maths degree, and you need some questions answering or you need a little bit of help, let me know in the comments down below or you can message me over on Instagram and I'll do my best to get back to you. Hopefully this video did help. If you did enjoy, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below. I've said everything that I need to say today, so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very, very soon with a brand new video. Bye! Five of them, have I missed any of them out? I don't think I have.